My name is... No, wait. Don't tell me. I got it. Jonathan? Hunting Palisman has been one of the most anticipated Season 2 Owl House episodes due to the fact that not only would Luz potentially be getting her own unique Palisman, but the Golden Guard was going to be focused on more here than in any previous episode he's been in. And let me tell you, it's my new favorite episode of the season. I feel like I've said this at least three times already since Season 2 began, but can you really blame me on this one? The first thing touched on in this episode is Golden Guard's relation to Bellas. He calls him Uncle and wants to help his condition even if it means using wild magic to do so. As I'm sure most of you have realized prior to this episode, Bellows needs the magic from Palisman to stay alive slash sane. Very similar to how Ida drinks her elixir to prevent the curse from taking over. Also very possible, Bellows himself is cursed in a sense, hence why his body doesn't look normal whatsoever. There's definitely a boatload of parallels between Luz and Ida's dynamic with Bellows and Golden Guards throughout this episode that I'll go more into detail about. Needless to say, I love when parallels are done like this. It gives me slight Deku All Might and Shigaraki All for One vibes. I live for that stuff. Of According to Bellows, wild magic is what wiped out his family slash their family, so he doesn't want Golden Guard messing with it, even if it has the potential to help Bellows. Instead, he just wants Golden Guard to find more Palisman, which he does, but just steals the hand-me-down Palisman from Hexide, which includes Luz herself and the little one-eyed Cardinal from the promos. Due to Kikimura's attack on Golden Guard's blimp, both he and Luz crash land, forcing a temporary alliance to get the Palisman back from her. From what I took from this episode, her motives seem to be related to not getting enough attention from Bellows as Golden Guard believing she deserves more, and she's willing to have her hand dragon kill him and frame it as an accident to get this recognition. Also, that hand dragon wasn't actually her like I had initially thought in my promo breakdown. Golden Guard eventually goes after Luz after she refuses to hand over his palisman. During the chase, we learn he can't perform any magic without it. And once he and Luz officially form their temporary alliance to get the palisman back, the two of them bond a little over wild magic literature, to which he lets Luz know he was born powerless, much like a lot of his ancestors. But Bellows found him one day, gave him the artificial magic palisman, said the titan had big plans for him, so he joined the coven. Hmm, now why would someone like Golden Guard, who is a Boiling Isles native, be a powerless witch and have ancestors that were powerless? Definitely doesn't have anything to do with Philip Wittabane, aka the only other human to live on the Boiling Isles during the 1600s. Couldn't be. It, it surely is, though. Phil could have easily bred with a Boiling Isles native there, meaning his magicless genes could still be patched on through generations. This could also explain why Golden Guard still has pointed ears, making the round ears from Phil a recessive gene, with the no magic gene being dominant. This combined with the two of them being complete weebs for magical literature showed even more parallels between them. Luz was born powerless by default due to being human, and was found slash mentored by Ida. And in order to use magic, she had to go about using glyph symbols that can only be seen through a photograph of another witch using a spell circle, which no other witch on the Isles knew about or even used, making both Golden Guard and Luz unique in that aspect. After saving the Palisman from Kiki and her dragon, we get to see how Luz's words slash ideals affect Golden Guard greatly, leading him to tell her his real name, which is Hunter. That makes the title for this episode even more genius than it already was. <laughs> you can definitely tell by the look in his eyes, he started to genuinely feel bad for what he was about to do. The little bonding he and Luz had over wild magic history slash glyphs was real. Hunter just seems like that guy who's always thirsty for knowledge about new magic, but Bellows prevents this. It's understandable why Hunter is afraid of Bellows too, you know, this is the man who gave him a purpose slash future. Being born on the Boiling Isles without magic, I'm sure was way harder to deal with than being a human who travels to the Isles without magic. At least all the others in your species are like that too, when you're a human. Hunter was likely seen as a statistical anomaly by others who just serves no purpose in society. This could also add to the fact why Kiki doesn't believe he deserves all this attention from Bellows, because he technically can't even use magic. Like he said himself, there wasn't much of a future for him in a world like this until Bellows found him. Even if this guy treats him like ass and potentially abuses him physically, to Hunter it's worth putting up with it if he's still able to use magic and have some type of future as a witch rather than no future at all. The Owl House never ceases to amaze me with these different family dynamics in the show. Even though Bellows is just Hunter's adoptive uncle, he's potentially the only family Hunter has at the moment. I'm curious what happened to the rest of Hunter's ancestors though. Did they all die at young ages due to being magicless? Hunter says Bellows found him, so I'm trying to figure out what that means exactly. Was Hunter an orphan, or did Bellows simply take him away from his birth parents after seeing his potential with the Titan? Speaking of Bellows, I'm starting to think it's less likely that he's related to Phil after watching this episode. Although Bellows has a similar palisman to Hunter that may also use artificial magic, Bellows can clearly still use powerful magic without the use of the palisman, let alone even using his hands while doing so. How did Bellows even make a palisman that uses artificial magic anyway? What, what does that even, what does artificial even mean? Like a human science tech kind of artificial? But if that's the case, 
Bellows could still be the one related to Phil. Like, how insane is it that each time I see Bellows on screen, I just have more questions about who he is than I did the previous time? Can't forget the Cardinal Palisman choosing Hunter in the end rather than Luz. Luz is still trying to figure out what she wants to do as a witch, hence why she didn't use the Palestrum tree wood that Ida found her right away. However, Hunter seems to have his goals set in mind learn more about wild magic so we can help his only family. It's pretty clear to me that Bellis doesn't care about this kid and is just using them to further help his goals, but it's still the, the sentiment that's there. You know, Hunter genuinely cares for people. There's definitely more to Hunter that we don't know yet that Bellos does, you know? Like, why does he need him for the Titan? Like, what does the Titan have planned for this kid? This Palisman picking Hunter was kind of perfect, though. Just from the few mannerisms that little guy showed, you could tell he was the free-thinking wildcard Palisman who just did what he wanted. Similar to what Hunter wants to do, though Bellos is restricting Hunter's free thought. I hope to see Hunter and the Cardinal Palisman bond more over time. I have a mini theory that the wild nature of this Palisman will force Hunter to embrace his natural free-thinker side more and more to the point of eventually standing up to Uncle Bellows. But what'll become of Hunter's artificial palisman now that he has a natural one? Will he have to use both? I, I mean, regular palismen don't suddenly grant witches more powers. That that's not how they work. They're meant to be just close partners. They fly you around for transportation and can be an extension to the spells you already know slash are capable of using. So Hunter will likely still need to use the other one to actually use magic, I think. After finishing this episode, there's no doubt in my mind that Hunter will become an ally to the Owl House gang. He has a kind heart deep down, but is shackled down by the man who gave him a purpose, and he doesn't realize how toxic the environment has become. I'm hoping more interactions with Luz and this new palisman help him realize how messed up everything is. Man, talking about this kid never gets old. I've been seeing comments lately asking if I'm ever going to make a video about Lumity, and I actually do have something about them in the works. I'm just not 100% sure when it's going to be out, but it's it's going to come out. Don't worry. <laughs> of course, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like down below. It helps me out a lot, but for now, I will see you guys next time. Peace out. Take care. Bye-bye.